Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Jo, and today we are going to be talking about the app LingoPie or the website LingoPie. This is absolutely not sponsored. I am very sure that LingoPie has never heard of me, but I have seen many ads for LingoPie in various videos, and so I just have always been curious about whether it was something that I would like, and so I decided to do the trial week and test it out. So this is the results. I am going to go through the navigation of the app or website, the use of subtitles and the quality of the subtitles, the flashcard functionality, the quantity of the content, the quality of the content, who I think might like this app, and who I don't think might like this app. There will be chapters if you don't care about any of these particular topics, but uh, we will just get started with the app navigation. So I know that there is an Android app. I'm not sure if there are any others, but I was using the iOS app and the browser. They are clearly kind of inspired by Netflix in their browsing. They have a, you know, popular category. They have recommended for you and then different kind of genres or other things that they're suggesting to you. So when you open it up, it is kind of guiding you towards content, which I think is helpful. The website and the app are very, very similar, like virtually identical. So something that is going to seem very, very nitpicky, but did actually bother me when using the app is that it can only be used in portrait mode. It does not switch to landscape mode. This is definitely something that could easily be changed in the future, so don't take my word for it indefinitely, but for now you can only use it in portrait mode. You certainly can view the content in landscape mode once you're watching something and you make it full screen, it goes into landscape mode. To browse, you cannot, which was frustrating for me because I, like many people, have a case that sits upright this direction. So, but otherwise I think that the app is very easy to navigate. You can filter the content if it is a language that they have content from multiple countries. You can filter by country, you can filter by length, by genre, and by level. If you are learning multiple languages, you will have a completely different interface for each language. So, say you are learning Spanish and French, like is the case for me, you don't check Spanish and French and it shows you both. You have a completely different homepage in Spanish and French, but they do each retain what you have already watched. Now, as far as subtitles, this is obviously a very big draw to the app. You can use subtitles in two languages at once. You can turn them on and off really easily. You can do a mashup and they are clickable, so you can hover over them to see what the definition is in your language of a particular word or phrase, and you can click on it and make a flashcard. So something that I think is absolutely wonderful about these subtitles is that they are translated at least somewhat phrase by phrase instead of word by word. So something that only makes sense as a phrase, you're going to get a much better translation from LingoPy than from other things like the language reactor extension and that sort of thing. The subtitles were not 100% accurate. I did see a few mistakes, but they were in general, I would say, high quality subtitles. They were not as good, I don't think, as Netflix's native subtitles, so when the content is in its native language, but I think they are significantly better than most automatic subtitles and certainly than things like uh, dubbed to translated where it's not close at all. So I would say I think that the subtitles are quite good even though they're not perfect. I personally was not super interested in the flashcard option because I don't really do flashcards, but I know that that is a selling point for a lot of people, so I did want to test it out. And it is extremely seamless to make flashcards. All you have to do is click on the phrase or the word and it will make a flashcard. And something that I really, really liked is that the flashcard actually retains the moment in the show that it was said. So when you go to review the flashcard, you can watch a little clip 
that shows when that particular word or phrase was used, sometimes with enough context around it that you can see how that phrase would actually be used. I didn't love that the flashcards are kind of integrated into the viewing experience, but I know that some people might really like that. So sometimes as you're watching, there will be a pop-up asking you if you want to review flashcards. I think it's if you've saved 10 words or something like that, and then between episodes it will ask you if you want to review. And again, I think that that will be a really big perk for some people, but I didn't love it, but it didn't really bother me. At the top of the screen, it does show the number of flashcards that you have in a little orange thing, and I didn't like that because it was kind of distracting but again, not the end of the world. The thing that I really did not like about the flashcards is that they are separated by show. So if you only saved one flashcard from a show, your like flashcard deck for that sh show would be one word. <laughs> so I did not see a way to review all of your flashcards simultaneously, which seems like a really big oversight in my opinion. That, that would be definitely something that I would want to do, would be mix and match the flashcards. And I don't know if that's an issue with the clips. Like, I don't know if they would have to remove the clips in order to do that. But I think that that is something that they should definitely think about trying to add in the future if they are not already thinking about that. I'm sure that it's a difficult programming issue that they are probably trying to work on as we speak, but yeah. Now, the quantity of content. I know that they say that they add content frequently. There's not really a way for me to gauge that in a, you know, trial period, but I will go through a few of the things on the screen here, but I don't want to show too much. I don't know how much it's okay to show of their catalog. I do think that the quantity of content varies based on language. So as you might kind of expect, the more popular languages to speak or to learn have more content. It seemed to me just anecdotally that English and Spanish had the most content. Um, they do actually seem to have quite a bit of Portuguese content, and then the rest of them kind of fall somewhere in a slightly smaller amount, I would say. I don't know what kind of expectations you know, other people would have going into something like this about the quantity of content. I felt like it was slightly less content than I was thinking it would be, but also it's hard to tell when you're just looking at like thumbnails and scrolling through because one thumbnail could be for a 10 minute video or it could be for a show that has a hundred episodes that are each 45 minutes. So it's hard to tell just from browsing, you know, the hours of content available. So I don't think that they have that listed anywhere, but I think that that would be really, really great information to have prior to signing up to just know that, say, in Russian there are, I don't know, 2,000 hours of content or something like that, you know, just to have some kind of baseline because obviously you're not going to be interested in all of that content, but just to know how much is available I think would be really helpful. Now we get to quality of content. This was my number one interest and my number one concern going into this, whether or not the content would be good or worth it or engaging. And I do think that my expectations somewhat aligned with reality. So a lot of the content is kind of travel-based content. Not all of it by any means, but there is quite a bit of travel-based content and it kind of reminds me of travel content on like Amazon Prime or something like that. A little bit older often, like early 2000s maybe content. There are some YouTube channels on here and for shows, the closest kind of parallel I can think of or, or the, the best like explanation, to me it felt somewhat like daytime television, you know, like kind of local or smaller TV shows, lots of kind of burn notice and psych knockoff kind of shows. And then there are a fair amount of shorts or other kind of artistic shows or videos where it is maybe like an awards uh, submission or something like that. 
and a lot of those are very, very cute or very good or interesting, quirky, but they are, you know, short, obviously, by definition. So again, this is going to be on an individual basis, only you can answer whether that quality sounds good to you or not, but um, obviously you'd have to probably give it a try to be really sure. <laughs> so I think we can run through some options of who I think this would be really good for. So first of all, I would say if you are struggling to find content for one reason or another, whether that is that you feel like you've watched through most things that are available to you that you're interested in, or you just actually struggle to make the time or the effort to gather content. Like if you really just want to log into an app and press the button for your language and just be given content to watch without having to distract yourself trying to look for anything, then I think that this would be really great because it is, could not be simpler. You just <laughs> click on your language and then you click on a show. That's it. Similarly, if you are struggling to find content with subtitles or with enough subtitles, if you're in a place in your learning where you feel like you really, really need native language subtitles along with the target language subtitles and you're struggling to find that anywhere, then I think that this would be really good because obviously you are guaranteed to have two language subtitles on absolutely everything that is on here and that is obviously a massive advantage and if that is something that you are struggling to find elsewhere, then here you go. If you like flashcards and you really, really want a very, very easy way to make flashcards with native pronunciation already instantly attached with no extra effort on your part, all you have to do is click. And finally, I would say if you are someone who is not super picky about what content you watch, if you are generally happy to watch just about anything, you're not like requiring amazing content, then I think this is an absolutely great option. I know that some people have said that they actually stopped subscribing to Netflix because they just watched this instead. So I think that that's absolutely wonderful if that works for you. Um, if you can hear my cat having the zoomies, uh, just ignore her having a moment. So the moment of truth on whether this app was for me or not, um, it was not. And that's not any kind of statement about not liking Lingo Pie or anything like that. I just personally did not like the content enough to say stay subscribed and that's really all there is to it. For me, and this is something that again is going to be so individual, but I still feel like I have an endless well of content. I am learning two extremely popular languages, Spanish and French, so there is virtually unlimited content available online and even on platforms like Netflix and Hulu, I have not even scratched the surface of all of the content available to me. So I was never motivated to pick this up and watch something. I pretty much had to force myself to watch things in order to have enough to say in this video because it's just not content that I want to watch. But I will say I am so picky about content and that's not to say like, oh, I'm so high-minded or whatever. It's just that I have a very bad attention span. So I don't think that this is so much a statement about the app as it is a statement about me. So there were a few other things that I did just want to mention about this app. And one of them is that a lot of the content on here is available for free online. And I don't think that that's a problem necessarily. Like I'm not saying that they are doing anything sketchy, recycling free content or anything like that because most of the stuff that I found for free online did not have subtitles or it maybe had subtitles in only one language or automatic subtitles. So they are certainly providing a service by providing the subtitles and everything. But if the subtitles are not the most important thing to you, then I would say two-thirds at least of the things that I watched when I googled they were available for free online. But they were not in like a centralized location, you know, one of them was on YouTube, one of them was on Vimeo, another one was like on its own website hosted somewhere. So that goes back to the if you struggle to 
collect the resources yourself or you maybe spend too much time collecting the resources yourself and you want someone to just provide it for you, then, you know, disregard this entirely. But if you do have a tight budget or you don't want to spend money on things that are available for free online, I did just want to mention that definitely some of this stuff is available for free online. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. So I would love to answer any questions that you have that I know the answers to in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.